So in question one, we have this, which is proof that two plus four plus six plus so on till two n equals to n times n plus one by the process of mathematical induction. Now, before we start, I want to make sure that we actually understand what this question is asking. So what it's asking is that the left-hand side, for us to prove that the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side, okay? That's a basis of mathematical induction. Now, the other thing I want you to understand is what that 2n here actually means. So what does it mean, 2 plus 4 plus 6, so on until 2n? What does that 2n stand for? Well, what that 2n is, is a general formula for each of these values. You can see that if we sub in n equals to 1, that gives us our first number, doesn't it? And when we sub in n equals to 2, that gives us our second number. And 3 gives us our third number. So this just gives us all the numbers and the last n will give us the last term. And that's why it's so on till 2n. Okay, now remember, to start off with proving what do we need, we always need that first push or the ignition process, which is step one. And in step one, we show that it's true for the initial value of n. So it's the initial value of n. Now we have to work out what is that initial value gonna be and how do we do that? Well, I'll teach you that now. So what we consider is firstly, your general formula here, which is 2n, and then we consider our first value. And then we think, well, what does n have to be for the general formula to equal to the first value? And you can see that n has to be 1, doesn't it? For 2n to equal to 2, n must equal to 1. So that's the first value of n that we have to prove, okay? so. Why I'm saying this is because I want you to know that n can be zero or one or two or any number. Now, 90% of the questions that we go through is gonna use n equals to one in the first step. So it's really easy for students just to assume that it's always gonna be n equals to one. So I don't want you to make that mistake. I want you to remember that step one is to show it's true for the initial value of n and then we need to always work out what that n value is, okay? All right, so how do we show it's true for n equals to one? Well, for all proofs, we start off with the left-hand side. So using the general formula, we have two times n equals to one. So two times one equals to two. And then we look at the right-hand side, which is n times n plus one. So that's gonna be one times one plus one which also equals to two. So now we've shown that the left-hand side equals to right-hand side. So therefore, we can make the conclusion that it is true for n equals to one. So what we've done is that we've proven that yes, there is definitely that initial push, okay? The initial starting process. Now we can move on to step two, which is making the assumption, so assume, that it is true for n equals to k. So remember, in terms of dominoes, that was when one of the dominoes makes the assumption that yes, if the domino in front of me falls, and then I will fall as well and hit the next domino. So we're making an assumption here. And how do we do that once we've written that? Well, we just substitute k into wherever there's n. So this becomes 2k, and this becomes k times k plus one. Now, I want you to remember this assumption because we always use the assumption from step two in our next step. So if by any chance you've somehow worked out step three without using the assumption, you know something's gone wrong. So I want to make you to make sure that you're always using the assumption from here for the next step. 